Tell me a little bit about uh, background on the uh, Boys and Girls Club of Puerto Rico, your work, the scope of what you do, and and then the hurricane hit. Yes. And how your service services have evolved. Okay. So basically, the Boys and Girls Club in Puerto Rico is a 50-year-old organization on the island. Uh, we're a 501c3 nonprofit affiliated to the Boys and Girls Club of America. Um, so we primarily do educational services for youth and kids uh, from 6 to 18. That's what we primarily do. Fast forward to Hurricane Maria, um, we saw the need and we knew that we had to do some things differently to make sure that our communities and our kids were taken care of and we kind of bring them to the normalcy. I mean, as close to normal as possible. So we basically converted our, our centers in community centers. So we could take care of food and water, shelter, and the primary needs. Um, in order to do that, we've partnered with corporate donors. We've partnered with um, the government to make sure that we do the strong alliances to, to bring services to our communities. That's what we're doing right now. So far, we've been able to give over 20,000 services to our communities, including food and water and packages distribution for goods. Um, but in reality, if we go back to before Maria, our kids and youth had a need, which was to have a strong educational support in order to get them through elementary school, through high school, to post-secondary um, education. So while we're doing a short-term relief because of what Maria brought to us, we're really concentrating on what we do with them moving forward. So before Maria, we already had a plan, uh, which is based on our economic needs on the island and to see how we move from a prevention model to a development model. We're diversifying our offer, so we are able to cater to what the island economic needs are, which are in tourism, health, and technology and science. So um, our long-term plan considers streamlining our services to those three pillars so we can pre prepare our participants to be part of our economic development on the island. Let's talk about education. Uh, tremendous impact the storm has had on, on education. Uh, where does that stand and what are you doing there? Yeah, right now, uh, because of the storm, most of our schools are closed. The ones that are open are providing limited services, uh, basically to provide them with breakfast and lunch and some, some sort of educational support. What we come to do is to make sure that we are expanding our services to take care of our kids and youth uh, and provide them with that educational support so we don't have such a big gap until all of their schools are back. Um, we started the first phase, which we're providing limited services from one to five because of the lack of energy in the communities. Uh, our second phase will be to expand from eight to six, so we can pretty much provide the parents a relief and they can, back, they can go back to work while we take care of their kids with educational support. Cool, and how do you, what could be the future role with you guys in schools and perhaps charter schools, and what's, what, how do you see sort of your role unfolding as the needs increase in Puerto Rico? Yeah, looking into the medium long term, we're looking into how can we fulfill the gap in education. 90% um, of our participants are under the poverty level. Uh, when you look at that, our participants are lacking the main resources or opportunities that other kids on the island or outside of the island have. So we're trying to close that gap and we're looking into um, strengthening our educational programs, looking into even charter schools and some other things that we can do, yes. Cool. And finally, for people who want to get involved, you're, you're raising money directly. Is it, is, is it, is it the, the Boys Club of Boys and Girls Club of Puerto Rico? Is it separate from the Main Island Club? Or tell us a little bit about how you operate. Yeah, we, have, we are affiliated to the Boys and Girls Club in America, of America, but we are uh, incorporated in Puerto Rico. So we're raising funds directly. Uh, our funding is currently 80% government and 20% private. That is something that uh, four years ago we started to change that model. So we are able to maximize the resources. Right now we have identified a gap of $8 million with whatever the storm brought us. Um, it's a $8 million that consists in $5 million to provide direct services and be able to pay our employees. Uh, considering if the government would not be able to pay us. As we know, we're in an economic um, situation on the island and the payments from the government could be um, impaired. 
Um, so we're considering that five million in order for us to continue providing services out of the normal grants that will cover for those services. And there's a three million, um, the three million difference is for us to expand our services. Um, be able to provide food and meals and, and extra services and expand the hours. From those eight million dollars gap that we identified, we've been able to already raise 2.5 million to private donors, to philanthropies, and to, and to corporate donors as well. Any contribution that we get will be uh, used towards providing our educational services, expanding our hours, our meal services to our kids, and then uh, we will be accountable for those funds. For so any contribution that we can get from private donors will be used towards our mission, which is to develop our kids and youth for their full potential.